Hello dear friends. Today we will look at the analog signal and analog functions of the controller Siemens logo. Continuously changing natural signals, for example, light, temperature, pressure, distance, sound are called analog signals. In an analog signal, some levels are described by infinitely large numbers, which computer technology is not capable of directly processing. Quantization is an operation for processing the form of an analog signal, with the help of which a constant level is assigned to the signal over a given period of time. Discrete signals are divided into digital or digital and binary signals. A digital signal is an image of an analog signal whose magnitude is represented using numbers of finite length. A binary signal has only two levels, logical 1 and logical 0. A device by which an analog signal is converted into digital to analog to digital converter ADC. The input of an analog system is a physical quantity, for example, voltage or electric current in a circuit, which, using an ADC, is converted at the output into a digital signal or number of finite length. The analog system consists of three parts. First, an analog sensor with an output voltage from 0 to 10 volts or a current from 0 to 20 milliamperes. Analog input AI1 of the logo. Physically connected to terminal I7, and the second analog input AI2 is connected to I8. Second, analog digital converter ADC, and third part is a memory register where the number is stored. For a 10-bit memory register, the range of numbers is from 0 to 1023. Analog sensor is a measuring device that converts an analog value, for example, pressure, temperature, distance and other value into a standard electrical signal with a voltage of 0 to 10 volts or a current of 0 to 20 milliamperes. Potentiometer is a variable resistance that is used to convert a mechanical quantity, in this case, turning a handle, into a voltage with a range from 0 to 10 volts. The potentiometer is built on the principle of a voltage divider. An analog sensor can be connected to terminal I7 in the program it will be designated as AI1. The status values of the analog inputs can be viewed on the logo module screen. To do this, press the ESC button and press the right button several times until the analog input field opens. A potentiometer can also be used as an analog sensor. For example, to measure the height of a part. The analog amplifier function converts an analog signal with some parameters at the input into an analog signal with other parameters at the output of the function. This changes the parameters of the analog signal. The main parameters of an analog amplifier are gain A and offset B. Analog trigger function. The output of this function is turned on or off depending on the setting of the on threshold and off threshold levels. Analog functions and how they can be used for measurement. So, we have an analog input. Let's make it a little bigger. There is an analog trigger function with which we will convert an analog measuring signal and determine the levels of response thresholds at the output. Let's connect output Q1, for example, to a lamp. In this way, through experimental measurements we will be able to determine the parameters of the on and off light bulb response thresholds. Let it be 600 conventional units, this is determined empirically, and 700 the threshold for turning off the light bulb. At the same time, you can use this table to configure the analog input parameters. So let's simulate our device. The analog input will change from 0 to 1000. In this case it is a simulation. If the analog value at the input exceeds 600, then lamp Q1 is activated. If the value is greater than 700, then binary output Q1 is switched off. Using analog functions in conjunction with a counter, that is, we control it in such a way that the value of the analog output of the analog block will be assigned to the counter. The counter will count the number of times the button is pressed and at some point in time the Q1 lamp will light up. Let's set the value at which lamp Q1 will turn on. For example, this will be the third time the button is pressed, and the shutdown will be associated with an analog value. 
Let's open this table and connect the output of the analog amplifier to the off threshold. But it is clear that the analog function must first configure the parameters, the smallest and largest values. Well, let's say, let it be, the minimum value is 4. And the maximum value is 14. Let's conduct our experiment. Before starting the counting, we will use the potentiometer to set the lowest value of the switch off threshold 4. We will also change the button simulation parameter. It will be a non-latching button. Our simulation parameter is now SWICH. We choose a button without fixation, pulse. Now we will count how many times the button will be pressed. We've already pressed it once. Pressed a second time. For the third time, the output of the counter Q1 turned on. For the fourth time, lamp Q1 went out. But in order to repeat the counting process, we need to reset the counter, that is, reset its value at the end of the counting process. This is the moment the lamp turns off. Let's apply the pulse function on the falling edge. At the moment when lamp Q1 is turned off, the counter will be reset at that moment. And the counting process can be repeated. So, let's carry out the test 1, 2 for the third time lamp Q1 turned on. For the fourth time the lamp went out, and at the same time the counter reset to 0. Now its actual value is 0. The process can be repeated. Before a new start, we can change the number of pulses to 14. Well, let's say it will be 9. Turn on the simulation 2, 3, 4. Lamp Q1 lights up. On the ninth press the lamp went out. The counting process can be repeated. Let's consider the operation of a timer in conjunction with an analog signal. That is, the output of the analog function will set the timer delay parameter. So let's create a simple program. Light bulb Q1 will turn on with a time delay. Let this delay be 3 seconds. After pressing the button, the light will turn on after 3 seconds. It will turn off when the TRG input goes to 0. That is, this is a ton timer. Let's set the parameters of the analog function. We have an analog input AI1. Using the analog function, we will change this delay parameter within the required limits. The output of the analog function could be, for example, the analog flag AM1. So, in this case, our analog value changes in the range from 0 to 1000. Let's simulate the operation of our program. So, let's say the value of the analog signal is, say, 537 then the timer delay will be 537 milliseconds. Turn on the I1 button and after 0.53 seconds the timer output signal will appear. Well, in general, the delay is very small and hardly noticeable. So, in about a second, after almost one second, the output signal will appear. We can also adjust this signal to a different range. Let the maximum output signal be 2000. So the output of the analog signal is 1968. We turn on the start button and after that the timer output signal will appear after a specified number of milliseconds.